Hello everyone, let's go ahead and take a look at applications of the unit circle. So here we have our unit circle, and again we said that if we draw a right triangle, such that the hypotenuse is going to be the radius of the unit circle, then we can come up with some very nice associations with any point on the unit circle, which is x comma y, to cosine theta and sine theta. Now, if we go ahead and use the right triangle and the Pythagorean theorem in general, to say that x squared plus y squared is equal to 1, then of course we know that this association will also yield this particular equation of cosine theta quantity squared plus sine, sine theta quantity squared is equal to 1. Now, in mathematics, we write it this way. We say that cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1, and that's going to be a key identity for us to remember. It is called the Pythagorean trig identity. Now, what is the value of this particular trig identity? It's that if you're given either sine or cosine theta, you can now go ahead and determine what the other value is, the other trig value is, without solving for the angle. So before, we would always have to determine what the angle was before we could go ahead and find out what the associated trig value was, but now we don't need to do that. Let's take a look at an example as to how we can do that. Here we go, given sine theta is equal to negative one half, determine what cosine theta and tangent theta are. Now, if we know that sine theta is equal to negative one half, I know that sine theta is also associated with the y value on the unit circle. So if I draw my unit circle and I also draw y is equal to negative one half, they're going to intersect in two locations, one in the third quadrant, one in the fourth quadrant. Which means then that I'm actually going to come up with two different values for cosine theta depending upon whether I'm in the third quadrant or whether I'm in the fourth quadrant. So let's go ahead and use the Pythagorean trig identity by substituting negative one half for sine theta squaring that to come up with one-fourth, subtracting one-fourth from both sides to come up with three-fourths, taking the square root of both sides, I come up with the absolute value of cosine theta is equal to the square root of three over two, and sure enough, we come up with a positive square root of three over two, or a negative square root of three over two. Now, the question then becomes is for a cosine, which one is it? Well, it's going to depend upon which quadrant you're dealing with. And generally speaking, the problems that we're going to come across are going to specify which quadrant it needs to be in. But for our case, since it's not specified, let's go ahead and take a look at both cases. For example, if we know that theta is in the third quadrant, well, if it's in the third quadrant, then that means that cosine is negative. Therefore, cosine has to be the negative root 3 over 2. Tangent then would be the square root of 3 over 3, because we know that the tangent is just going to be the sine theta over cosine theta. On the other hand, if theta was in the fourth quadrant, then we know that cosine has to be positive, and again, using our definition of tangent to theta, we would know that tangent to theta would be a negative root 3 over 3. Now, that's one method that you can use, again, using the Pythagorean trig identity. Another method that you can do is also taking a look at our original definitions of what sine theta is. And sine theta, based upon a right triangle, is going to be the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Now, what we're going to assume is that the hypotenuse is always going to be greater than 0. So I'm going to associate the opposite side with a negative 1 and the hypotenuse with a 2. So if I go ahead and draw that, a right triangle, such that it fits this description on the x and y coordinate, in the x and y coordinate plane, with the, uh, with the, with the, with the uh, vertex of the triangle, one of the vertexes at, at the origin, then I'm going to associate this negative one with the opposite side. And being that I'm in the x and y coordinate plane, and I know that the sine theta is dealing with the y, is associated with the y value, then the y value is going to be a negative one. And I draw my hypotenuse, which of course has to be a positive value, is two. Now, if I go ahead and use my right, my Pythagorean um, theorem, I can then go ahead and determine that these x values over here are going to be equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. Again, which one is, am I dealing with? Well, being that this is going to be in the first quadrant, oh, sorry, this right here, this point here is going to be in the fourth quadrant. The x value has to be positive. As this particular x coordinate has to be negative, we know that that's going to be associated with the negative root 3. So therefore, I can then go ahead and use my definitions uh, using right triangle trigonometry of cosine 
to determine and cosine n theta n tan theta to determine what those values are. So to wrap up again, we looked at the unit circle, and we know that we can come up with the Pythagorean trig identity, which is going to be very helpful in determining the other trig ratios without actually having to solve the angle. And we've shown how to do that here, and it's going to be very important afterwards to be able to determine whether or not your particular value that you're solving for is either going to be positive or negative. Again, take a look at which quadrant you're dealing with. And then after that, we can go ahead and determine what the other trig, uh, trig values are as well. And then we can also use another method, which is just using uh, right triangles in the x and y coordinate plane to do the same thing. Now, here's a, here's a question for you that you might want to go ahead and take a look at uh, for the next time that we meet. It says, if tangent of theta is equal to 2 thirds and theta is going to be a first quadrant angle, would you be able to determine what the sine theta and cosine theta values are? So again, we'll take a look at that question as well as look at anything else in here that might have caused some uh, points of, might be a cause of points of discussion. And we'll take a look at those the next time that we meet. Okay, see you next time. Bye-bye.